aloha and welcome to Nonprofits Mean Business, where we will delve into services provided in our community by nonprofit organizations. I'm your host, Krista Stadler, joined today by Ron Mizutani with Hawaii Food Bank. Aloha, Ron. Thank you for joining Morning me. to you, Krista. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Um, I have a lot of things to talk about, some very prevalent issues, but if you would just briefly let us know, you know, how you came about joining Food Bank as president and chief. Well, and Chief Executive Officer. Thank you. It, yeah, it's been quite a journey to get to this point, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. It's been almost two years. Uh, next month makes two years. I was actually where you were uh, for 33 years at KHON uh, delivering the news. So it's, it's, it was a little different um, career adventure for me. But yet, at the same time, it, it really wasn't. The, the, the transition has been almost seamless for me. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that I, I worked with a lot of different uh, segments and fragments of our community, um, whether it be stakeholders at the, at the legislature or or uh, the community neighborhood board meetings, uh, things that I covered in the past. So I had I had a broad range of of what was happening in our town and and relationships that I built through the years. So that helped in my transition to the food bank. I had also been a board member at Easter Seals for almost ten yeah. years. So that was my exposure, if you will, to to the nonprofit world and. I fell in love with the nonprofit world and I was an advocate for the for the disabled for many years, continued to be one, and now I'm an advocate for the hungry and, and the subject of hunger. So uh, it's it was meant to be. And the opportunity came forward two years ago and after thirty three years of delivering the news, I'm now uh, making a difference in a different way. That's so awesome. I love it when people reach out with their passion. Well, I know you had an event happening this weekend that we were going to talk about today um, that unfortunately I'm going to let you share what's happening, an update regarding that. Well, there's certainly one of our biggest fundraisers of the year, and that's the Great Chefs uh, Fight Hunger event, which we host here at, at our, on our property in our warehouse. We turned this into just a gala event, and it's, it's quite a scene to see our warehouse turn into to something so, so beautiful and so festive. Uh, we have restaurants from all across the state, Oahu, and we have over 500 guests here enjoying uh, a night of good food and great entertainment. We had Henry Capono, who was supposed to be uh, performing mm -hmm. with us that day, uh, that evening. But because of the coronavirus, we had to make a decision. Uh, we made it last Friday to postpone. And um, it was it was actually not a very difficult decision to make. Once we learned the facts and, and, and not get too caught up in in uh, the hysteria of what's happening today, because what is happening today is very much so an event. My apologies for that. Um, but it's something that we needed to understand and the impact it could have had if someone were to come to our property and, and not uh, and, and not know uh, that they were ill and go away with being ill and, and others uh, affected by that. So at the end, it was a decision that we had to make and it was a responsible one. And uh, now that we see as other events are unfolding and canceling, including some major events and, and closures of parks and Disneyland. And it's, this is unprecedented. This is something we've never seen before. And I think in transition to hopefully our next subject, it's gonna impact um, us in a way that we've never seen before in Hawaii as well. And the yeah. face of hunger will change in the next few weeks. I, I do wanna talk about that. Um, I, I wanna get into, maybe after we talk about that, I wanna get into your operations and what it takes to run it and all the, the, the different pieces of the puzzle. Um, I don't know whether it's, to, to, maybe we should talk about how you feel at this point, this uh, pandemic is going to affect you from, mm -hmm. a, um, from the food bank standpoint or some things that you're maybe you thinking that. about that, now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. The last 24 hours have been a lot of thoughts and, and, it's, and quite frankly, a sleepless night. Uh, the World Health Organization, as we all know, uh, is now defining this as a pandemic, and we anticipated that was happening. And so we had to make some decisions even before that declaration and, and def definition was made uh, because we know it's going to impact our, our inventory in a very significant way. Mm -hmm. You know, as is right now, we serve one in eight people uh, go to bed uh, hungry in Hawaii every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, that number will uh, expand as, as this continues. We anticipate people will start to lose their jobs because of the economy. That will include, uh, whether it be in the visitor industry, whether it be just business as you, and, and in general, small business and even corporations will start laying people off if this continues. And frankly, there is no end in sight at this point. And that's part of the fears of this unknown virus is there's so many unknowns. Uh, but we do anticipate it'll impact uh, 
the amount of people that have needs. We're already seeing that uh, of what goes out the door every single day. Our inventory has been impacted already. The demands have increased. Um, my biggest fear besides inventory, uh, which is what we base our a day with operations wise, is mm -hmm. how much supply of food we have. Can we match the demand? It's simple economics, even with can, food, supply and demand. Can you tell me a little bit? It's, I've actually been to your facility and, and I'll talk to you more about that. It was yes, a great experience you. and we're going back in April, hopefully, um, if they're gonna let us come together. Um, can you let me know a little bit more about you know, how do you, how, where does most of the majority of your food come from? I mean, I always think in my mind, oh, it's coming from individual people, but it sounds like that's not necessarily the case. Individuals Not necessarily donating. the case. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, in Hawaii, we, we're, we're unique in so many different ways. And our food bank operations is unique compared to our other uh, sisters and brothers out in, in the rest of the country uh, when it comes to food bank operations and how they get their food. We do have food drives. We do rely on, on, on the efforts of our community and our generosity of, of our donors, uh, whether it be a coalition of, of, of bankers or, um, in, in, you know, during our food drive season, we have different ways that we gather food. We also receive food from the letter carries event that you take part in May when you, when you put your food in those blue bags, plastic bags, they eventually come here. Uh, and we also have relationships with our retailers and our you know, the Safeways and the Times of the World and Tamuras and, and all of the, the uh, local uh, stores, as well as the, 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 the big stores of Target and Walmart and, and Walgreens, uh, they also assist in donations. And then we get uh, donations from our farmers and our growers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do get our, our share of fresh produce, but it's usually at the end of life. Uh, um, what we don't have, we have to purchase. Um, and in this case, when there's an event, uh, whether it be a tsunami or a hurricane or an, an a partial government shutdown or even now the coronavirus, we have to make up uh, what we don't have in stock, in inventory, uh, that's not coming in as a donation, mm -hmm. we have to purchase. And that's where heavy costs come in. Okay. So with the grocery stores, what, what inventory are they passing on to you? Things that are close to expiration, canned products, you know? Um, is that the type of thing that they decide, okay, we're going to go ahead and pass this on to the food bank? And when do they make that decision or how do they make that decision? You know, they're, they also are evolving in the, how they do business. This is before this uh, event even came about. <clears throat> they're, they're tightening their belts as well. So mm -hmm. what we may have seen five years ago, we're not seeing that kind of donation flow like in the past. Uh, but yes, they are giving their non-perishables that are uh, ending life or, or best by dates. Uh, there's also, if, if a fruit or vegetable does not look uh, pretty, uh, we, we get that as well. Um, and also at the end of um, dairy products that may be coming to an end of life on, on the shelf may not necessarily mean that it's not good for somebody at home and safe to eat. Sure. So we have guidelines that we have to follow. And that's when you came in and, and yeah. sort through food and look through the cans, make sure they're not compromised. Um, that's the kind of food that we have uh, from our donors, from our retail product partners. And I was also very curious when I was there about how many items that were not necessarily what I would think of as food, you know, baby food. I, I believe there was dog food. There were there were maybe non-perishable <coughs> items. T tell me about some yeah. of those items norm people wouldn't think that would be um, held at your facility. Yeah, we do have, it's not just food. Uh, we do have our share of, of hygiene products for women. Uh, like you said, we do have cat and dog food. We have, we're close partners with the Hawaiian Humane Society. Uh, those who have needs at home also have pets. And, and so we do supply and provide food for that as well. We are very grateful for our partners from CBS and, and others who do have uh, excess inventory to provide our, our way, whether it be, like I said, a, a feminine hygiene, hygiene project, whether it be toothpaste, uh, toothbrushes, those are the items yeah. that a lot of people don't think about yeah. that the food bank may uh, provide. And so, yes, but those two, we have to make sure that they're safe. They're not open. They're not compromised. Uh, they're not leaking, whether it be a, a detergent or so, or even a dog food that's not open. We don't want to be sending anything out the door that we wouldn't consume ourselves. All right. So you've got, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, the one large warehouse, is that correct, here on the island? But then you have a multitude yeah. of different distribution points as well. Is that correct? So, or is yeah, that by so truck? Can, well, let me let me just back up because maybe people don't understand 
you think of a food bank, you think this is where they come to gather, I mean, to get what they need. Uh, we, we have a 25,000 square foot facility here in Mapunapuna. We gather the food here. We house it, we store it, we, we inventory it, make sure it's safe. We have over 200 partner agencies that actually do the distributing. Okay. So it's your soup kitchens, your churches, uh, IHS, Salvation Army, they actually either come here to gather the food for distribution to those in need, or we actually will, depending on the need or, or the size of the distribution effort, we will deliver it to them. Uh, for example, today is a very big distribution point uh, at, at Vineyard. Uh, maybe if you've been under the freeway, you've seen a lot of people um, congregating right now at about, at about noon, uh, maybe 500 people. That is, uh, we are partnered with Surfing the Nations and they help us distribute that food. So maybe 500 people are there gathering their food um, and their box of food, but it's really feeding over 3,000 people. So from a staffing perspective, there at the warehouse, what how many staff members do you have? So we have a Old warehouse here in Oahu. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we have a warehouse on Kauai that serves okay. the island of Kauai. We also have partner agencies, a distribution partner agencies on Maui, Maui Food Bank and Hawaii County at the, the Food Basket. Um, but here on Oahu, we have, uh, between Oahu and Koi, we have about 55 full-time employees. Wow. And if you think yeah. about what we do, it's um, it's a big staff, but it's not a big staff. Um, so we rely tremendously on our volunteers like you, uh, like businesses who come here and help us sort through the food to make sure they're safe. We, we train you folks. Uh, so that you know what to look for, what what to, is good and what isn't good. We also put our eyes on it as well. Uh, but without our volunteer base, which is thousand strong, um, we couldn't do what we do. It's it's a really it's a machine. And if anybody's have a chance to come visit what we do, you will be blown away uh, if you could visualize a million pounds of food leaving the warehouse every month. Yeah, and that's what it we do. A, a million pounds of food. It's a machine. It, just the little else. small part I saw and was part of was so well organized, and it, we had a great time doing it. And you know, you, it, it, I thought it was great. How, so, someone, yeah. uh, how does someone qualify, or um, if they're in need, what steps do they take? Access to all, access to all. Okay. We we do not discriminate, uh, and you know, I'll be very honest. There, there's a perception or misperception of that. The way food bank serves the homeless. That is true, but it's just a very small population of who we serve and who we provide food for. You know, we provide food for our working families, our kupuna, our keiki at school pantries. Uh, we, we provide food for domestic violence shelters and the violent, des domestic violence survivors, our veterans. Um, it's a very broad reach that impacts uh, those who have needs. Hunger in the face of hunger can change, as we all know, overnight. Uh, we saw it during, we see it during disasters. Uh, we see it if somebody loses a job, some loved one loses a job or, or, or passes. Uh, it can be a partial government shutdown. When, when the government shutdown happened, we had Coast Guard personnel and their families in need of food. They never thought they would need food. We had TSA workers in uniform coming here to our warehouse in tears asking for help because they never thought they would have never to thought. stand in line uh, for food. So it's important to understand the community, it's important to understand who is being serviced by Hawaii Food Bank. And as this coronavirus uh, pandemic continues, I, I, I'm afraid to say that we will probably see a lot more people who, who will have needs. Well, thank you. We're going to take a little break and um, come back with Ron to talk more about the Hawaii Food Bank and we appreciate you staying tuned. Thank you so much. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Being a lawyer has many aspects and I try to cover them every time I do a program of Law Across the Sea. Not everything has to do with law, 
or being a lawyer per se. Some of it has to do with the people you meet, the things you see, the places you visit. And that's what I try to combine in Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Thank you for watching. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Nonprofits Mean Business 2. I'm here with Ron Mizutani from Hawaii Food Bank, and we are going to continue to discuss um, the Hawaii Food Bank's operations and, and more, more currently what they are doing to help um, prepare for the coronavirus situation. Aloha, Ron. Welcome back. Thank you for um, having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. If, if you could talk, I want to really have people understand from a cost perspective you know, what it what it takes um, what does it take for a container of food what does it cost for a container of food and how long does that last a whole container well, that depends yeah so it depends on what's in the container okay and you know if you can keep in, this in mind too when we purchase food we can purchase it locally as well there's some heavier costs with that so we can also purchase uh, from the mainland uh, because of our feeding America affiliation and it's a network of food banks that requires us to be very transparent with our paperwork and, and safety, et cetera. We have relationships with stores. We have relationships that can stretch the dollar further. So if you were to go to a store to, tomorrow and, and or tonight and spend $20, what I could do with $20 based on our relationships that we have goes a lot further. That being said, if I were to order a 40 foot container of say corned beef, uh, which is what we currently are doing right now. It's just I can look at it. I'm looking at a uh, order right now. It's about 41,000 uh, pounds of corned beef that's on its way in a single container. The cost of that is about a hundred thousand dollars, and that's just for the food. If you were to add the cost of the trucking and also the shipping, you're di you're talking about an additional four to five thousand dollars. Right now, I just had to make a decision on purchasing food. And we are bringing in about 200,000 pounds of food in preparation for coronavirus. Uh, that's going to cost us over $252,000. So, and that's in shipping and, and, and trucking costs. So if you can imagine, that's part of our, our daily expenses or, or at least our, 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 our budget. Sure. Your and budget. that has to be, our budget changes. I mean, depending on the need. So we have to project what we're going to be needing but also prepare for the unexpected, which, as we all know, in Hawaii, whether it be a, a natural disaster or a shutdown, or in this case, what we're dealing with now with the pandemic, it can happen overnight. Absolutely. And, you know, we have to, and then to keep in mind, if, if we're ordering something from, say, Minnesota, which we often do, it takes four to six weeks before it actually gets here. My goodness. Uh, we can order something from CNS down the street, and we'll get it here in a day. But we're really at the mercy of shipping and that long journey across the Pacific Ocean. So we are, our, our geographic isolation really puts even more challenges when it comes to operating and projecting our needs. Uh, and that's something that uh, thankfully have a, a staff way smarter than me uh, that can help uh, do all of that uh, logistic planning. Uh, but again, we have to make decisions sometimes before an event even happens, if that makes sense. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't even imagine how, and things do happen, even if the stock market crashes, which doesn't have to do with us physically, it still impacts the economy. Yeah. Um, and how, long, how much food, say per week or per month, goes out? So if you're bringing, if you're, I'm just curious. So just on a daily basis, about 40 to 60,000 pounds of food leaves our warehouse to, to those who in need. And that's only on Oahu. So annually, we uh, between us, <clears throat> excuse me, Kauai, uh, our Kauai branch, Maui County, the Maui Food Bank, which serves Molokai and Lanai as well, and Hawaii County the Food Basket, which serves Kona and Hilo, the Food Bank Network of Hawaii distributes about 17 million pounds of food annually, um, with majority of it coming here from Hawaii. Uh, last year, I think we did just over 11 million or just just under 11 million. And a lot of that is uh, in fresh produce, uh, over three and a half million pounds of food in fresh produce. Strongly believe that just because you're hungry and you have needs doesn't mean you cannot have healthy options. And that's something we want to be a part of the conversation with and drive that conversation. Uh, one of the things that I did when I first got here, Krista, was I, I, I looked at what we're doing and how we were having an impact on on nutrition and 
if we want to preach good health, we have to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. um, I would never take spam off the floor, nor would I take ramen, but we're no longer purchasing spam and ramen. We get it in the donation, absolutely. You do. We'll, we'll accept it and, <laughs> yeah. we, and we will distribute it uh, because the needs are great. But if I ever took spam off the floor, I would not have a job. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But not in Hawaii, at the same anyway. time, we have to, not in Hawaii, <laughs> uh, because I love spam too. Yeah. Um, but the reality is we want to have healthier options proteins, vegetables, and, and all of those items that, that we really all need to stay healthy. Absolutely. I, I was, you know, investigating some of your special programs and, um, I mean, one of them is your senior farmer's market. Um, and then, you know, you have a couple senior program, the food for cakey program and the Ohana produce plus, um, would you like to, to talk about those specific programs? Any of them? Well, each of those, yeah, each of those are very, very special and very important to our mission and the, and the mission we serve. Most of the food that we uh, distribute to our to the community goes out in what we call Ohana distributions, and it's really a, a, where a big group comes, uh, like today at, at Palama Settlement and uh, under the the viaduct there that, at the church, the Samoan Church. We also have a big distribution out at Angel Network Charity, uh, Angel Network, which is out by uh, East Honolulu. You may see the long line of people there. Those are what we call Ohana drops, and they include non-perishables, our produce, <clears throat> uh, if we have frozen foods, things that we can move that single day and get them out to those in need. Uh, one of the more, they're all important, uh, yeah. but one one area that we really focus a lot of our strategy and, and efforts on is is feeding our keiki. Because yeah. um, that's, a, that's a, and we're gonna see this with this coronavirus, if, if this impacts Anyway, closing our schools, you're going to see a lot more families that rely on schools for the only meal of the day. Uh, so what we launched in May of 2018 was an uh, initiative, basically like, like a school pantry. And we partner with schools across the DOE, asking them and letting them know we will supply the food. We will supply the inventory of food. And we'll even help you with cupboard space and cupboards. And, and if we have to buy a refrigerator, we, Hawaii Food Bank was going to do that. All we ask of you is to have a location for us to distribute it with uh, one of our partners uh, that in the area. Um, it took a while for it to launch, frankly, uh, which we found to be uh, baffling at first. Uh, but as we got into more schools and the administrators who were um, open-minded and understood that they had needs, their students were falling asleep, they were having a hard time concentrating, more and more schools signed on to it. And as of Today, we, we are in over 30 schools across Oahu and Kauai and growing, but growing wow. carefully. Uh, we want to be able to sustain that. We don't want to open a school pantry and not have food for the children. Uh, and we've noticed and we've heard testimony from administrators and educators that they've already seen a change in, in behavior, in, in learning, in attention spans. Um, and that's because food is fuel. And, yeah. and sometimes I think decision makers, and I say that with all due respect, because many of them are my friends, but sometimes I think they lose sight of that. And that food needs to be a part of the conversation when it comes to preparedness, when it comes to resilience, and when it comes to the responsibilities of all. Hawaii Food Bank will always respond if we have food, yeah. but we do not have an endless supply of food. And I think there's also this, um, there's this expectation uh, that, oh, that's okay, the food bank's got it. We will. We'll do everything we can. Be very creative, but without our donor support of our community, and we're so very thankful for that. Uh, and we cannot function without donations. We cannot function without without help from our community. And and we don't take that for granted because everybody has a choice on who they support. Well, would you please share um, your website? Uh, sure. so you can just Google Hawaii Food Bank, but you know, go yeah. ahead. But if <laughs> If you go to hawaiifoodbank.org, uh, it's very easy website to navigate. We're, we've really made an effort to to make it something that where it's easy as if you want to learn more about what we do, our mission, you want to see what we do, uh, our 990s, if, if you want to see what, uh, we're very transparent with, with what we do, the monies that we do get donated. You know, out of every dollar, 95 cents goes right back into our mission. And that's uh, uh, something that we take very pride, much pride in. Um, because not everybody can say that. And uh, the Charity Navigator understands that our, that is our commitment 
and they have, you know, uh, recognized us for that um, being that efficient with with funds and and how we are efficient with with our operations. It's it's um, like you like you've seen. It's something that that requires an army um, to do and to execute every single day. And when in days in crisis like what we are experiencing right now, mm-hmm. we need support. Um, uh, from from anybody who has a capacity. Sometimes when we're in the midst of a crisis, the last thing we're thinking about is a donation, and I totally understand that. We want to prepare our families, but at the same time, I do ask and I humbly ask to think about others who may be in need because it could be you tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I wanted to just share. I know we felt like we're all so heavy about everything that's going on, but I just yeah. wanted to share a picture of our group. Um, oh my. This is my staff and, and some of the folks. I don't think everybody's in that picture. Some of them were doing something else. But we had a great time. I think it's definitely yes, worth it. Yes, it is. So there's our great crew. And do you yeah. have folks like our group there every single day doing that? Is that a daily event? We'd like to. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> okay. reality is sometimes it, it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um because we can't do it with the st- our staff alone. We, we need groups like that. Basically, what you just showed was a picture of our salvage area where we have our donated items. And you literally went box through box. Beans, goodbye canned can meats, every- you know, looking at everything. You expect the dates and everything. The, the, the reason why we, we put so much effort in, in that, eff- you know, that, that program right there is because we want to get the food out on the floor for distribution. But we want to make sure it's safe. We want to make sure nothing's got a puka in it or yeah. rusted or or so old. Uh, you know, some people just empty their cupboards, and we understand that. Uh, and we dispose of food that that is not safe uh, for true. for your grandma to eat. They so we thank you. That. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Thank have, you. Thank yeah, you. Have, I'm so sorry your event had to be canceled, but I know when you're able to to do it again, it'll be yes. awesome, and um, I'll be able to actually have enough time to prepare to. To attend it because I'll know about it soon. I'll know about it when it's going to be. <laughs> we happening. appreciate it. And thank you yeah. so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We hope we have inspired you to find a way to give back to our community by supporting a cause you are passionate about. Thanks, Ron. Aloha. Aloha.